Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Um, I'm on my way to go get this Kawasaki mule from a buddy of mine who I do work on his equipment. So uh, we're headed down, <clears throat> down the road. I got the trailer on. Actually, I just unloaded it. Uh, I had a bunch of tools on there, so uh, I'm good to go. There's more stuff in the truck. I'm not worried about it. I'm already starting to get tired. But uh, trailer's ready. Before I unhook it and go somewhere else, I, might, I figure I might as well just go grab this Kawasaki mule. He's having a problem with it starting. It's not starting or something. It's been years. He's had it at the shop, and no one could figure out why it won't start. And uh, you know, if you got gas and fuel, you, we we know it's going to start. So uh, I'm going to go down there, scoop this thing up. If you've got a Kawasaki mule, yours isn't starting. Maybe the fuel pump's bad, fuse, relay, carb, whatever it is. I'm going to figure it out and show you how you can figure yours out by watching this video. So uh, let's go ahead and get down in this truck and get down the road, man. I'm ready to get this thing, and get it back to the shop and uh, get to work on it. All right, so I'm here at the house and of course uh, the unit's rear brake is locked up. People are up on the porch. A friend of mine, probably been drinking, it's cool. And uh, nobody's helping me move it. So I guess I'm gonna have to muscle this mother myself and get raw and I will just lift it all the way up on here I don't even care anymore back brake totally seized up you can see where I drag it I lifted the whole back end oh my. Uh -oh. Uh, today we're working on this mule, it's a Kawasaki Mule 550 and a uh, buddy of mine had it, I uh, bought it, I'm not sure if it ran when he bought it, got a good deal, you know how it goes, you get a good deal or somebody says they got a good deal, but the thing won't start or won't stay running, so uh, we're here today just to show you what to check for and how to get these running, if you've had one that's been sitting around, you haven't driven it for a while. Uh, you know, we're going to show you how to get it started and the simple things to check. We're going to check spark, we're going to check uh, the gasoline, and we're going to check the carburetor. And the, this one has a fuel pump, so if it's, got, if it's got the air, it's got the spark, it's got the gasoline, it's got good compression to pull the air, this thing should fire up. Alright, so we got a new battery for this. You can see where the end was smashed down from shipping. And I went ahead and I just made sure the hole here was true because this particular battery mounts on the, the front here. Some of them mount on the side. And they've got those square nuts that go up in there. I usually just pack them full of grease. And June's cleaning those battery connections. June's cleaning those connections with that drill. See that nice clean copper? That drill makes quick work of it. I tell you, I love those electric drills. The back side too. Sweet. Pretty good. And uh, you can see the battery, these come with little nuts that slide in the side and you can either put them flat ways so you can use the screw hole here, you can put them sideways and use the screw hole here. We shove that uh, Permatex dielectric grease in there and it actually holds the nut in there. You can't really see the nut, barely, right there. And it holds that nut in place. If not, it starts falling out when you're carrying it. If you put it together in the garage and you come out here, the nut falls out the side and you can't find it. So June's just 
I'm gonna apply uh, liberally a uh, little bit of that dielectric or you can use uh, petroleum jelly, Vaseline or whatever. It works just to break that air from getting to the connections and starting the corrosion. He's got them ready to go and this is all greased up. Got that new Caltrick battery. Uh, it was maybe about 30 some odd. I can't remember how much we paid for this battery plus shipping handling might have been free shipping so under 50 bucks we're getting a nice battery if we went up to the store it would probably be $60 or $100 depending on where you live so just order one online have a beer have a coffee wait a couple days get something else fixed on it clean it up and your battery will be in so uh, let's get this battery hooked up Make sure the positive and negatives are, are on the right direction. You can see right there, we've got the red boot for the positive. June's installing the negative side. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and test for spark now. June pulled that spark plug up out of that cylinder and he's got it plugged into that coil boot right there. We've got the new battery installed. Hold down's good to go. So uh, let's go ahead and try to start this and check the spark right there. I'll put my foot on the brake. June will hit that. Yeah, a lot of spark. See? Yeah. What do you need to go ahead right there? Pull back. Pull back a little. When he pulls it back off that uh, that grounded bolt there, man, we got a lot of spark. So we'll probably go ahead and just wire brush that while we've got it out and spray it off. We know we've got sparks, so we're gonna go ahead and put some fresh gas in and uh, see if this fuel pump's pumping out and pulling out fuel. Okay, so uh, June went ahead. Would you use the wire brush on the drill? Wire brush and a little sandpaper. A little bit of sandpaper. Sandpaper in between. All right, he's got some starting fluid because we're out of carb clean, but we're gonna clean that uh, plug off. Spray it a little bit more just to make sure all the grit's up out of there. It looks pretty, yeah. So when we get spark now down in that cylinder, we can either put straight gas in there or we can see if this thing fires on its own. And that, that starting fluid should be enough to start it up. So let's go ahead and get that back together and turn the key over to see if this thing does start on its own and then we'll move our, make our way to adding some gas and checking this fuel pump. Uh, so now let's go ahead and add some gas to the gas tank and see if, the, if, if it's pulling fuel through this fuel filter. If not, we'll disconnect this line going to the carburetor and uh, see if it's pumping fuel. But we did notice some of these gaskets are a little loose, or uh, these clamps. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the end of the hose off and put them back on with a new clamp or try to reuse this. I think these are, have stretched and shrunk over time. This one's got actually, this one has a crack in it. So this one's not even, it's not gonna even pull air from the gas tank. So let's go ahead and change these lines, fix these lines, add the gas, fix the lines, and then try to start it again. All right, June's gonna, got that fuel line off there. Uh, going to the fuel pump from the vacuum of the motor, he's just gonna cut it back. You can see how it's, it's kind of just stretched out. It's gonna cut it back a little bit. The line still feels pretty, pretty soft, doesn't it? Yeah, good. You have the clamp on there. So he's gonna go ahead and see if we can get that clamp. How does it feel now? A little tighter? Mm -hmm. And this one right here is broken. So let's go ahead and just take this off. Yeah, I got him right here. Take that fuel filter off. and Actually, we can extend that line a little bit and get this to go forward some. Head gas in it. So it's starting up to pump a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's a good sign. The fuel pump's probably pulling air right there, and it's never gonna run right um, if you don't. If you if you got leaks on those lines right there, so yeah, look at that line. Let me show them that. It's just all cracked up and it's just never gonna run right. June went ahead, he's just gonna swap it out. I think it's this one here, the smaller one. 
eighths and five sixteenths right here. Sure that's it? Yep. There we go. Put that on. Cut it down to size. Uh, I would just move that. When I looked at it, it looked like this could be the way this rolls over top. Let's just go ahead and get that kind of snugged in there like that and cut it back in there somewhere. Plus you can push it on a little bit further. We can always trim it down. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Run this like this, can you get this like that? That's exact fit right there. Yeah, I left them out in the rain. And it looked like there was one other clamp back here that was a little little loose. So I don't know how snug that is on that gas tank. It's, feels good or? It's tight. It's tight. Man. It's tight? Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave that one alone. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and swap this fuel filter out. And actually, we've got a Hastings, a GF95, and you can see on these Hastings, uh, they got an arrow which shows which way it goes. It's got to go gas in here, gas out there. And uh, you can see it's got the smaller tip here to the bigger. So depending on what fuel line you're using, on um, this particular one, the fuel pump, we're going from a smaller line on the pump to a bigger line coming out the front. So this will line up perfect. All right, so here's the moment of truth. We've got that nice see-through uh, gas filter. I went ahead and took the, the hold down off of it so we can see it right, real good down in there. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and start it. Oh, and let's see if it'll pump its own fuel. I'm not seeing nothing. Leaking something down. Is that leaking or just dust? It's just dust. Have an oil check on this thing. I checked the oil, it's full. Oil's full, okay, let's try it again. So we can go ahead and prime the system or double check to see this fuel if this fuel pump's working. If not, we're gonna have to grab one off the shelf and install it. Alright, so I got another fuel pump off the shelf. It's a little different than the one that came on this. Uh, these work on like the Skag and X Mark zero turn mowers, other pieces of equipment. So we've got our out here, our vacuum from the motor here, and this one's going to be sucking in from the gas tank. So we're just going to have to reroute it, or at least turn it like this, just to get it started. <clears throat> All right, so we added a little bit more gas to it. Disconnected that intake line off the fuel fuel uh, tank that goes to the pump. We got a little mini funnel. Let's pour some gas in there, fill this filter up, uh, this filter, and then see if this the fuel uh, pump will actually work. And if it works, then we'll go back and try the old pump. And if it doesn't work on the old pump, then we know that that's a problem. Get a little bit of gas. Yeah, there she goes. That'll prime that pump a little bit being brand new and being on the shelf should fire off. You can put your foot on the brake there, June. Actually, you don't need to on this one. Maybe give it a little bit of gas. Do that. Let's check it. Got a choke here. Oh, there you go. Hit that choke. There we go. Let's hit a little gas here. Take it off choke. Let's try one more time. Could very well be that vacuum line coming off that motor. You can see where they got mulch and everything else down in there. That thing's got cracks or frays in it. 
it's gonna just be drawing air from the air and not off the crankcase. So let's see if we can swap that off. Maybe get this uh, carburetor to figure out what exactly is going on. Any gas coming out of there? Yeah, yeah so the diaphragm's not working. It's gotta be that vacuum line. Let's swap that out. Okay, so uh, we kind of messed around with this. We've got this new fuel pump on here. We double checked it. We've got our suction in, our gas in, our gas out. And we went ahead and we went back here to the motor. And he had just a bunch of mulch all around through here. So we pulled this off and uh, coming out of the motor. And June pulled the other end off of here, off this fuel pump. You want to do that and just blow through it real quick, June? Maybe something with the connection, the seal. He blew through it. Let's try to start the motor and check for vacuum real quick, just with my finger. Go ahead and try to start it, June. We've got great air. It's blowing up. I mean, great. It's got plenty of air. We know the line's clean. Uh, we checked it kind of for leaks. June said it didn't really look like it was frayed or beat up. So let's just push it back on there, at least temporarily. And hook it back up to that uh, new fuel filter. See if we can get it running. Or at least getting pumping fuel from the other side. Yeah, yeah. disconnect that, that uh, tube going into the float bowl on the carburetor and just set it there. And let's just look to see if we get some fluid, some gas coming out from our rig up. Got, we've got flow now. The question is, is do we take off our temporary fuel pump and hook up his to see if his is working? Yeah. Maybe because the vacuum line could have just been altered or leaking and uh, we really weren't getting any good fuel flow. All right, so we rerouted the fuel lines right back to the OEM stock, to the, to the stock fuel pump, just to figure out if that diaphragm in there is officially broken. No, let's just try to start up. Oh, let's disconnect it from the carb one more time and see if his fuel pump is in fact pumping out. If it is, then uh, we know his pump is at least good or could be possibly weak. His fuel pump is actually pumping out better than the one we used. So I think it should, it might start and run like crap. And then we'll just go ahead and pop this carburetor off and June will clean that. We'll show you how to clean that and get this thing back on the road again. All right, we determined the fuel pump's working. So uh, now, in order to get the carb off to clean it, we got the choke cable here. June's gonna undo that. And we've got the throttle linkage right here. It kind of goes down in and crooks. If June just gently pulls that up and out of there, and there's a smaller spring, spring clip that accompanies that. Just make sure you get that right back on there. That's gonna be your return spring. Sometimes when you take the carb off, you can turn it and then get, get the spring and the linkage out. Yeah. Might be a little hard to do without taking the carb off. A little screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of stuck, stuck down in there and you don't want to break it. It's just crooked down in there a certain way. So uh, let's just go ahead and get this off. Once you get your linkage off, there are two bolts on there. Looks like two 10 millimeter bolts that takes off that air air filter intake boot and your other uh, intake uh, metal boot that holds these studs that come off the motor like this. Once you undo that, this carb should slide right off. This off. And just be careful of your gaskets down in there because we don't have gaskets to rebuild this carb. So uh, we're gonna try to just reuse everything that we need to. We, we have made our own gaskets. If you check out the other videos, in the past so if we need a simple looking gasket we can cut it out of this roll of gasket that we have from 3m all right well, i think we got it from car quest so june's going to go ahead and get that carburetor off there and we'll go ahead and open this up show you how to clean it all right so we got the carburetor off this uh kawasaki mule let's just go ahead and take it apart start off taking that bottom float bowl off with a 10 millimeter wrench you want to be careful of these gaskets. We're actually using, we're out of our CRC, non-chlorinated, but we found this old brake right in the shop here. But it is non-chlorinated, so it won't swell those gaskets nearly as bad if you had 
some chlorinated. In there. Yeah, and you can see where that gas just turns into, I call it caviar. It's like a squishy fish egg. If you go ahead and you, you poke this with the screwdriver, it just, it's just mush. It's very similar to caviar. So that's why it's not starting. And that, uh, it'll be all up in the jet. So Gene's got this needle nose pliers. And he's pulling out, he's gonna dislocate that float. Trying to get that float pin out there. Can you get it? Oh, it's probably stuck in there. Whoop. Might have to tap on it right there. Yeah, put a little spray. Is this float moving at all? Not really. A little bit. You can see that carburetor sits like that, and the gas pushes up that float bowl, which pushes in this little needle seat seal right there, and it blocks the gas from going down right out of that jet right there so uh, you can just see the fish eggs are everywhere all over the bottom and that jet up inside there is most likely closed so we'll clean this float bowl here with a toothbrush get this little pin out of here <clears throat> it's probably stuck in there and once you pull that little pin that float hinge pin there this float will come right out of there and we'll get to that jet uh, the needle seat up there and we could go ahead and pull this jet out right down there with a flathead screwdriver so june's in there getting <clears throat> another tool i'm going to run a little bit of cleaner up this main jet you want to watch your eyes it will blow back and, and blind you and burn your eyes And there's a gasket around there. You want to be careful not to disrupt that little black O-ring right there. Just leave it alone. Clean it off gently and just leave it alone. June's got a little little light, a little tennis tool. He's gonna pop that little pin out. Stuck. This, this carb, I don't think he's had this thing running for years. There's your pin. You hold your needle or your float. You took the float off and you can see the needle right there. Looks like a little wash in the monument. Sometimes these will get swollen out and they won't go up in there and seal that, um, the needle seat right up in there. It goes right there, show them that June. It goes right up in there. And you got another jet there, it will pop out. And we'll clean that with some, uh, got some stripped down copper speaker wire that we push up through there. Tough, huh? Need a little bit of WD-40 or something. They should just pop right out. Tight. So that means anything that's in there is most likely just going to be dried fish eggs. You should be able to see. There's a hole, a hole all the way through. If you hold it up to the light, can you see through it? Oh, no, it's clogged. All right, so show them how to clean that out. We got a piece of that stripped speaker wire. And, uh, we just strip the end of the speaker wire off, spick, uh, strip the coating off, and we just poke that, that main that wire up through there, and you just keep running it up through there. A little bit of this spray. Let's do a little bit of this spray while you do it. Let's get that totally cleaned out. Up. See through it now. Yeah, you can see through it. So up inside the carb as well. We're gonna have to make sure that that's clean. I'm just gonna put that wire right back down there. You want a little spritz? There you go. There's your main needle. Let's clean this out over the tray. Up with that, that Washington Monument needs to in there. Yeah, you 
see all it's coming right out of the, the gas tube. The tube. Just full. That's our problem right there. Let's turn it. Let's squirt up inside here in the gas intake tube here. Watch your eyes there again. And it should just come right out, right out of the carb there. Yeah, it's totally, totally clogged. Let's just put some in there and see if it comes out the bottom. Yeah, there we go. Good, good flow. This is clogged too. And that, that was up inside where that one main jet was, the one that was hard to get out, the copper one. Look at all this stuff came out of it. All right, and that one should have, does that one have holes in it? And it's, it's got a bunch of these little teeny pinholes going down the sides. And you gotta rotate it. You gotta poke in there with that wire. If that wire is too fat, we use another wire. We use the straight stranded wire and we just pinch, pick one little strand out of here and poke it up through there. That speaker wire's fitting good, June. Mm -hmm. Through all the side holes and everything. No, 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 no. And it fit through the sides. So that bigger wire fits through the middle. We're gonna have to use that stranded wire to do the sides. So you can see the, the holes on the outside, but there's holes on the inside of that tube. Now it's it's moving freely now. Yeah, so we're good. But see, you've got more holes right here, and if these aren't clean, it's never gonna run right. June's got that small wire brush, and we've got some old toothbrushes that we keep as well to clean that float bowl down in there. You want a little bit of old gas? a little bit of old gas to clean it out. It's cheaper than the car clean. And a little bit here on the outside with the toothbrush. That's your, that's your bowl drain right there. That'll drain the bowl if you wanted to drain it for the winter time. Pretty clean, huh? Just go ahead and spray up in there. bottom of that thing off. Right. Pretty good. Pretty good has the inside look. Pretty good compared to how it was. You can see that little teeny hole, it's way down in there. That goes to your drain plug on the float bowl. It sits like that, so the winter time, you can go ahead and take that screw out and it'll drain all that gas, gas out of there. So we're gonna set this to the side. It's got that, that needle, that Washington Monument needle right there. Does it look dirty as well? Like this. Yeah, that you want to be careful with the carb clean because the carb clean can eat it up. We're going to use some old gas that we have and just soak it in there. If you hit it real light with a toothbrush or something, don't use that wire brush on it. You don't want to break that little rubber seal, otherwise it's, not, it's just not going to work. You can have the carb as clean as you want without that working right, <clears throat> you're done. Spray it off with this. Good. It is good. Okay. So we've got this jet. This main net, main jet's good. If you spray up into here and you cover the bottom, it'll squirt out these little holes on the side. Still does have a little bit of green tint corrosion up in there. I don't know if you can really get that out. Uh, I might have tripped it. Let's try this right here. Just put that toothbrush down in there. And they do make some other carb cleaning brushes. We use them sometimes. We got them in on the shelf. I think June's going in to get those. And you just want to clean it while you're in here. I mean, you might as well just clean it and clean it right. You can see that jet starting to squirt out the sides. If we go ahead and clog that bottom up. You'll see it now. So we're good. And you got these little brushes. 
They sometimes work, but let's see. I'll run these brush down in through there. You don't want to get it stuck in there. It's a little better. Let's go a little smaller, see if we can get all the way up inside there. Yeah, looks good. Some of the green's just not going to go away. I'm going to try to take this dentist tool, see if I can clean it, scrape it out. And just hit it one more time. Light. Good to me. Good to go. And just note the way that that comes up. It looks like it had a seal or something around there. I wonder if that plug is up inside there. It's hard to say without having a diagram. This was probably up. I'm not sure which way you pulled this out. Just make sure you put it back in the same way. That's the way you had it. Okay. You can take some pictures of it or whatever you need to do. Good, keep spraying that out and clean it off. Make sure this is clean. Yeah. He's just going through, we got these little carburetor brushes that came with some carbs we bought. And you can get them on Amazon or eBay or anywhere. Uh, just be careful when you're poking down through it. You don't break a piece of the brush off. Sometimes you can chase up a little bit of juice up in there. And then hurry up and clean it before that stuff evaporates. All those crystals that was in there. Yeah, that little, those fish eggs, that gas, that ethanol and that gas just is turning everything into just, just total junk. So, man. All right, let's go ahead and reassemble this and get it back on the unit and see if uh, this thing will start and run on its own. What about this uh, this float? You can see the way that float sits in there. It's that little cool. needle. You see there's a little teeny tab on that needle. It's right there, you can barely see it. And you check the, you check the spring in the needle. There's a little spring inside there that goes down. Clean it. Let's go ahead and just push on that real quick while we've got it off with this uh, dentist tool. Yeah, there's no spring on this one. It just rides straight and pushes the seat up inside the seal like that. It'll just go up inside there and seal. So that's clean. You just hang it right back on. It can't go but one way. Just hang it right back on that little tab right there. You just take that tab over it like this. And this scares a lot of people, but uh, it's really not hard. You just take the tab and put it over there. It dangles just like that, like an earring. All right, guys, so we came in. It's a little bit hot outside just to kind of dig into this carburetor a little bit more before we get it back on the machine. And what we didn't show you when we were outside, where were those two? There's two other, look like little mini jets, you know, right down in, in here. I'll point to it with the screwdriver. One in there, and one in there. And there's also another cap here. Uh, we took out, the, there was a screw with a lid on it right there. And it just held this little plug in there. You can see it, it's gotta go. And that thing's got holes in it too, so we're gonna go ahead and wanna make sure you poke all these holes right there. And spray it down and then put it back in and there's there's two if you spray the carb spray down in these these two little uh, little mini jets right here one there and one there one will come out the bottom right here and one comes out where that top cap goes in right there so just clean everything make sure you uh, this has a screw head on it but it actually just pulls out like a cork 
and then put that top cap back on there. It's a little bracket that goes over it with the screw right down in there. That holds this down in there, that little plug. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean that off, put it back in. We've also got our, our idle jet here, or our, our accelerator jet. Air mix screw out, and that was right, where was that bad boy? It goes right here, up in the front. This is like that towards the motor, and it's right up there. So just if you take that out, just count your number of turns and put it back in. All right, so we're back outside, it's getting a little shady. And we were showing you before that one needle. You can take this out, just count the number of rotations to get it out. And then underneath that cap, it's a little, looks like a cap like this. It's kind of weird, it just holds that in. And you just pull that out with a pair of needle nose. It'll pop right up out of there and you can clean down in there, which we did. So we're gonna put this back together. And that just takes a Phillips head. snug that back down the way it was. We had to use a pair of channel locks to pinch the sides to get it off. And we sprayed, sprayed a little bit of WD-40 in there before we put it back in. And you've got those two little teeny jets right here. Let me try to show you. There's two little things and they go right in. We looked at a diagram online because we knew, we knew it had more jets and they go right in these little holes right here next to the stud holes. So we made sure those were clean, the holes were open in them, we sprayed them off, and we used this little teeny flathead screwdriver down in there. It actually looks like a still for chainsaws, and it's just a still little, little chainsaw flathead. Screwdriver fits down in there perfect. Let's get those back in. All right, so. June went ahead and put the main jet back in, the long tube with the holes all on the side, and the main jet with the screwdriver head that he tightened up right in there. Snug that down. Let's go ahead and put that needle and uh, the float back in there. And I showed you how it goes on there, so we're ready to uh, install it. You gotta make sure the float's flipped over the same exact way as you took it out. And it just goes right down in that hole, just like that. See it hanging on there like an earring? It goes right in. And then you just use that little float pin and push it through. This little pin has a flat spot on one side. So that side you're gonna leave out? Yeah, the flat side, it's kind of like, it's not egg shaped, but it's notched. It can only go in one way. Let me move it up a little bit. Hold on real quick here, Jim. Okay, let's spin it around this way for him. And that pin just goes right on in there. And June's gonna grab it and snug it up. Just pinch it lightly. Yep. Yep. And let's check to see if the float's moving the way it should. And basically, that little tab on that uh, the needle, the Washington Monument, the earring, is pushing up inside there and shutting the, the gas off. Once the bowl gets full of gas, this floats up and shuts the gas off. As you use the gas, it opens up. So we're halfway there. The gasket around here still looks good. It does have a little bit of just junk on it, but uh, I think that's just from where it was sitting around the outside of the bowl. It's almost like half of it's missing. We'll see if it, if it leaks or not out of there. Maybe that's the problem. Someone's been in here and chewed that gasket up. You see it? Put some crap in it. I'm gonna try to spray it and gently brush it off of there. Real lightly go around it. Even this dang toothbrush too. Good. I right, just clean that off. Boom! We're ready to put that float bowl back on there. Yeah, and you want that drain to that float bowl sticking out to where you can get to it later for the winter time. That's it. Just tighten that float bowl back down, snug it up, and this thing's ready to go back on the unit. Got our 
vacuum line that's got to go back up to here. for that one too, isn't it? Just get that accelerator linkage on there. There you go. Just got that choke cable fed back up right up through there. This side here. get this thing started. One fuel line right here, right? One vacuum line there. All right, let's clamp back on here real quick. Test drive this thing. All right, so for the moment of truth, we've got the carburetor back on. All the fuel lines are hooked up. New fuel filter, carburetor's clean. Vacuum line from the fuel pump comes around here and goes to the top part of the motor right there. That's pulling, pushing in, or I believe it was pull, it was pumping out air, which is going to push in that little diaphragm in that fuel pump and make it pump and suck out around. So. Uh, we can go ahead and try to start this and she should just fire up and run. Uh, I can put a little choke on. Go ahead. So, carbs back on. Took that middle jet out, the two part main jet, the pellet up top, and uh, everything's good to go. We got a new spark plug coming, fuel filters on, the fuel pump's working. Got some fresh gas and some gas cleaner. And uh, let's go ahead and start this thing and take it for a quick test burn. And move on to the next thing here. Ah, yeah. Be cruising around the fairgrounds in style this year. June's grinding gears already. He's already in. Wasn't it already in first? He's got to put it in first. I usually change gears then start it. Oh yeah. Got some Kawasaki. The mule power. what I'm talking about. I'm Keith, that's June. We're working, but we're really having fun. Two guys have to, check it out, fix it yourself. Email us, hit the comments, whatever. We'll hook you up, we'll help you out. Peace, check out the other videos. Yeah! What's up, Iggy? Talk to him before I shut the video down. Oh yeah. Yep. You're not a pig, you're a lawyer. He's not a pig, he's a lawyer. Peace. I'm not a pig, I'm a lawyer.